when you look after your job and you're prepared and you're happy in your job, that usually transfers to the rest of your life. So the people that are playing real well, they go home, they don't think about hockey. They don't let things get in their way. The people that aren't doing very well at the rink, they take it home and it probably affects their family situation, probably affects their sleep and in the end affects their energy level. So, you know, it's all, it's all encompassing when it's not going well and, and yet it's just a great thing when it's going well. A bit of a schooling, if you will, no question, uh, time to flush this away, but there's been a bad, bad taste left in the head coach's mouth. Well, I mean, we got slapped, right? Our fans deserve better than that effort last night. Uh, it's on leaf like as far as I'm concerned now, and we're not playing like that. Uh, we got back to work today, did our little penance, and then uh, we'll get back on getting better tomorrow. Well, after the worst home ice loss in Mike Babcock's history, it was a penance skate for the Leafs. The lights went out, but the skating continued. Think about stopping practice when the lights went out. Why, they can't skate in the dark or what? I love his competitiveness, um, and he gives us size, uh, but his athleticism is exceptional. Certainly when you get a goaltender of this caliber with the experience he's had and the success, I think that uh, acquiring him is the most important thing, the price for secondary. He's my guy, I want him to play. So I can pull him and then say, okay, I showed you, what did I show him? And to me, dig in there with the rest of the guys, uh, make the next save and, and give us a chance to come back and win the game. Well, you can't do that sitting on the bench. Brady, what's been the biggest challenge for you early in this year? Freddie, what about the adjustment to a different team, a bigger market? Has the learning curve coming to a new team been steeper than you expected? How do you typically work through rough patches? Uh, well, you just gotta challenge yourself to work harder. That's the only thing to get out of it. Uh, if, you, if you aren't feeling like uh, like you're being hit with the, hit with the pog and, or seeing the pog, you gotta just work harder this year. You come to a new city, so you come from an environment. I coached in Anaheim too, so just like he played in Anaheim. So the expectation in an environment, even though they have a really good team, but the way your life is in the community. You come here, you go from being a, a player who was one of two goalies and didn't have a big contract, suddenly you sign this big contract and you wanna deliver on that contract. You know the team's traded a lot for you, so you put expectation and pressure on yourself. It's usually not what other people put on you, it's what you put on yourself. And at the start, it got in the way of being who he was. And obviously, he settled down and got played. We play in the greatest hockey market in the world uh, with the most fans and the most media. And th whether people believe this or not, they're cheering for you. They want you to be great. That's what you got to get through your head. No one's, there's no witch hunt here at all. They want to cheer for you. And if you're great, they're cheering for you. And if not, they want a new guy. 
Well, I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's something that took a little bit of time to learn, and I'm glad it's it's going better, and and I'm I'm finding a way to to not uh, have it add more more pressure or anything. Once you play more loose, you can you can really be more comfortable and play uh, play your game. The Leafs look to bounce back from a tough outing against the Kings on Tuesday night. How does this apply to their blue line tonight? Defensive hockey is a will more than a skill. So that tonight, whatever team has more will is going to win the hockey game. When I get to the rink, I, uh, I listen to some music, probably mostly like hip hop, Drake, Jay-Z, Eminem and stuff like that. It's uh, something you, you learn when you play this many games, you don't want to tense up and and I think that's what I used to do when we played less games, like 30 games a year. I think you start thinking about the games way, way earlier. When you play the, this many games, you, you learn to, to come to the rink, relax. Try to stay, stay a little bit calm, uh, playing soccer with the guys. And, and then once we have our meetings and stuff, uh, styling it up. And once the game comes, you, you start to to be able to find your uh, your zone a little bit quicker and, and your focus uh, on the game. I try to keep the same kind of kind of routine, not to try not to be too superstitious about it. Skate around the crease a little bit through different kind of motion. Sometimes I like to change them up a little bit because it's not really the same every time in the game. So why would you have the, the same there? It's more about just getting loose and getting your mind uh, mind ready to go. You know what part's mental and what part's physical in anything you do. None of us really know. I just I just know when you're real strong and mentally, uh, you tend to bounce back in a hurry. Here's Riley. Up a hit for Kadri. Kadri busts in. That's a Kadri scores. Werner gets it back. Now feeds in front. Here's Riley scores. Morgan Riley first of the year. Here's a break. Wayne Simmons is in. Shot scores. For me, it's, it's about being being set and being uh, squared up before the before the shot and and uh, being ahead of the play. I think that uh, that was the main thing, and I think uh, I've, been, I've straightened that out pretty well now, and and uh, I think it definitely feels better in, on, uh, on the net. The part of the actual shots is not the the biggest thing. It's about being ready uh, in between. Really excited be, about being in a big city now, and, and in, a, in a market that's uh, really, really hungry for hockey and, and love, uh, love the game. It's kind of funny that there are so many young guys, and even the, the older quotation marks uh, guys are are like my age in late mid late twenties. And yeah, it's fun to see uh, young kids coming up with that excitement, and and we're starting to get together as a group and. And, and playing better. That's what uh, the goal is, to, to keep building every day and, and, and learning. It's awesome to see, uh, see the guys having fun.
Well, you'd like to think you grow and you change every year. And, uh, you know, a lot of different athletes over time being in contact, a lot of different coaches, you learn a lot, of, obviously, as you go. And then uh, I spend a lot of time meeting other CEOs of companies and gather lots of information from outside our sport that helps you with people as well. You have to understand the game and how to teach it and how to present it. But in the end, you're dealing with people and, and what makes those people go. And so you need that other skill set, but without the ability to talk to them and deal with them on a daily basis and understand what makes them tick, you have no chance to be successful. Somebody who has kids like I do at a certain age that are the same age as our players, I think that's really helpful. And my kids being Division One athletes, uh, you know what they go through, and I think it helps you uh, with these young guys. I like our young players. We can be a way better team with detail, though. We can be a way better team fast. So we need to get more detail in our game, and we can't have the variance from night to night that we have. I got a 23, a 21, and a 19-year-old. There's variance in their life too, though. I don't know if you know. In the new world, and if you have any young people in your family, you know they're on their phone all the time, and there's constant information. So for me to pretend that they're going to do what I do and watch the hunting channel, the strict country music. That's not what's going to happen in their life. There's all this information coming in, but if you get too caught up on, on letting someone else tell you who you are rather than knowing who you are, that's a problem for you. So what we ask of them is we ask them to come and try to be good pros every single day. We ask them to eat right and to live right and be good in the community. We talk to him about it's a privilege to play in the National Hockey League, and in particular in Toronto, and so to treat it with respect. And you have an obligation to your fans to play hard, uh, to do things right, and to treat people right. I think winning's an attitude, and I think that's something we gotta learn as a group. And uh, I think over time that will come. You've gotta believe in yourselves as a team. Is this Sasha? 